here's your wrestling news for March 5th, 2023. And we're kicking off with SmackDown, and on this week's show, Ronda Rousey accompanied Shayna Baszler, and the former SmackDown Women's Champion appeared in a sling. Immediately, fans believed that this injury was just a part of the show to sell the effects of a brawl with Natalya and Tegan Knox earlier in the night, but that isn't the case at all. PW Torch reports that Rousey is legitimately injured and has actually aggravated a previous injury in her arm. While we don't know the specifics, this injury is believed to be a minor one as she is expected to be fully healed in time for WrestleMania 39. At this time, there is no match announced for Rousey at the April event, though many believe that she and Baszler will be challenging for the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships soon enough. On Twitter, Rousey gave her first comments since the injury and once again called Tegan Knox Skittles while congratulating Baszler on the carnage. As for whether Ronda Rousey wrestles between now and Mania, that's difficult to say, and we're wishing the baddest woman on the planet a speedy recovery. On this week's Raw, Lita teamed with Becky Lynch to capture the WWE Women's Tag Team titles in the Hall of Famer's first taste of gold in over 19 years. This week has certainly been a big one for the women's wrestling icon, but WWE isn't the only place she's shown up. At an event for the indie promotion Hood Slam Wrestling, Lita made a surprise appearance, albeit without her newly won WWE Women's Tag Team Championship. Using language you certainly won't be hearing on Raw, Lita told the crowd, F the fans, which the excited crowd chanted back. Lita didn't come to blows with anyone on the show, but did hand the mic over to Sheikah before being on her way, and it just goes to show that anything can happen in the world of wrestling. More from SmackDown as the show continued after the cameras stopped rolling this week as Cody Rhodes defeated Finn Balor in a dark match. Post-match, Rhodes reiterated his plan to dethrone Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 39, and time will tell if the American Nightmare keeps his promise next month. During the August 30th, 2021 edition of Raw, Charlotte Flair faced Nia Jax, but things were much different in this match. As the two women laid in several legitimate-looking blows, many fans thought that the pair had gone off script, and speaking on a recent episode of The Sessions, Jax told Renee Paquette what really went down. We were kind of laying into each other, and I was like, what the heck is going on right now? And I think at the point where everybody saw on TV, I was just like, F this dude, you're laying into me, I don't know what's going on, so I just gave her a two-piece back that kind of rocked her back into like, let's finish this match and get together. She's one of my best friends, so it wasn't like we were sitting there super mad. There was some sort of miscommunication. We got backstage and I literally was like, what the f I look at her and I said, are you good? She said, yeah, yeah, out there something went off and I didn't feel right. While Jax did make a return at the 2023 Women's Rumble match, we haven't seen the Irresistible Force since then. And it looks unlikely we'll see a hard-hitting rematch from this match from 2001. In AEW, the promotion often pays tribute to many famous moments in wrestling history, but recently, a little homage to Stone Cold Steve Austin didn't land as they expected. During one match, the camera zoomed in on Wheeler Yuta's bloody face in a clear nod to the iconic shot of Austin screaming in pain at WrestleMania 13, but some legends didn't care for what they saw. When a fan wondered how Austin himself would feel to Yuta being compared to him, Kevin Nash gave a curt response, simply saying, don't worry, he ain't watching AEW. That response got a response from The Undertaker, as the man who headlined WrestleMania 13 said he had a huge pop when he saw Nash's tweet. Paying tribute to wrestling legends and their iconic moments is a common occurrence in the wrestling industry, but not every tribute will land as intended. And what did you make to Yuta's tribute? And were the comments by Nash and the Phenom appropriate? Let us know in the comments. In 2020, Roman Reigns returned from hiatus as a heel, something fans have been clamoring to see for some time. While WWE never went all in on a John Cena heel turn, Reigns' turn has led to one of the most dominant championship reigns in wrestling history, all the while being assisted by Paul Heyman. Speaking on the SI Media podcast, Reigns' special counsel spoke about what fans have seen these past two and a half years and believes the Tribal Chief is just an extension of the babyface Big Dog. It's the portrayal of a hero that was pushed too far and that went too far and had accomplished so much that once he reached that level that nobody else could have attained, he felt the burden to stay at that level. 
the responsibilities and the obligations and the accountability of being at that level and everybody depending on you weighs on him to such a degree that the things he would do to retain the position on a consecutive level. Today is day 917 of Reign's incredible championship tenure, and while many have seen the Tribal Chief as a complete U-turn of the babyface fans rejected just a few years ago, Heyman clearly sees things differently. Over to AEW as tonight's Revolution event won't see the face of the Revolution ladder match, which instead took place on Dynamite. Given the significance of the match, many have wondered why the match was moved, and it turns out that the main event of the show required the match to be moved. When Sportskeeda's Max Everett asked about the decision to move the match on the pre-Revolution media call, it was said that the hour-long main event led to a shorter-than-usual card. I asked Tony Khan on today's AEW Revolution media call about booking a 60-minute Iron Man main event, its effect on the rest of the card, and last night's Dynamite. He confirmed that it necessitated the preponement of the Face of the Revolution ladder match. Less matches on Revolution's card that we have come to expect, but iterated that he was excited for the main event and feels it's been handled well. Tonight's show will mark the first AEW pay-per-view of 2023 and the promotion's first Iron Man match, and the last thing they needed was a long card and an exhausted crowd going into such an important match. In early 2021, Taya Valkyrie signed with WWE and used the name Frankie Monet in NXT, only to be released as part of the dreaded budget cuts that November. Since then, Valkyrie has returned to Impact Wrestling, where she is one-third of the reigning Knockouts Tag Team Champions with Rosemary and Jessica, but could she soon be back in WWE? PW Insider reports that Valkyrie is planning to finish up with Impact soon enough, and that there has been heavy interest in her from both WWE and AEW. If Valkyrie did return to WWE, then it's likely she'd have to drop her other titles that she holds, namely the AAA Reina de Reina's Championship and the MLW World Women's Featherweight title. In AEW, the odds are greater, though not guaranteed, that she'd be able to keep these titles and make appearances for AAA and MLW, but she has spoken in the past about wanting another shot to prove herself in WWE. Valkyrie's belief is that she just wasn't given enough time to show what she can do during her brief WWE tenure. And where would you like to see Taya go next if she leaves Impact Wrestling? Back to SmackDown, as during his passionate promo, Cody Rhodes said that he has been doubted his entire career, and people doubted that he and his friends could ever sell 10,000 tickets for an indie show. This line was a nod to 2018's All In, which proved that there was a market for a major wrestling event in the US other than WWE, and the line did not go amiss by some of those friends. On Twitter, the Young Bucks reacted to Cody's comment by changing their bio, which now just reads, All In. Many consider All In to be a proof of concept for AEW, which would be announced just a few months later, and it's good to see that Cody hasn't forgotten all those that helped him on his journey back to WWE. Since 2015, Dana Brooke has shown off her wrestling skills across various brands, but the former 24-7 champion may soon be stepping into the ring of a different kind. Speaking with Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful recently, Brooke said that boxing is on her bucket list and has considered taking a boxing fight on soon. Brooke has also been training in jiu-jitsu and has been helped by her fiancé, MMA fighter Uli Diaz, so she's certainly got a wealth of expertise for her training. Whether she is able to compete in a boxing match, that's something WWE's higher-ups would have to decide, but with Triple H's new era being so different to his father-in-law, don't count anything out. In recent months, Ricky Starks has really come into his own on AEW programming, and there's a reason why he was the first person chosen to challenge MJF for the AEW World Championship. With his feud with MJF in the past, Starks has moved on to feuding with Chris Jericho, and despite being his enemy, Y2J has had some high praise for the young star. On Busted Open Radio, Jericho said he's seen glimpses of The Rock in Starks' work as a wrestler and on the mic, and said a promo from Starks in San Antonio, quote, blew my mind. Jericho went on to say that Starks is honing in on how to hold a crowd in the palm of your hand, sometimes without saying a word, a feat that the Great One excelled at in WWE. While Starks is a long way from matching the success of The Rock, the fact that Jericho, among others, are comparing the two is a big deal, and the future looks bright for Ricky Starks. And we're ending with Jeff Jarrett, and after being released from WWE last year, it wasn't long before Double J was in AEW. J 
Jarrett was hired in November as the Director of Business Development, but what that title means exactly remains unclear. When Catch News asked Jarrett about his roles, he reminded the French entertainment site that AEW is a privately held company and that he will share what he's doing backstage when those details are ready to be told. It has been reported that Jarrett is one of the individuals working on AEW's upcoming plans for house shows, with the first AEW House Rules event scheduled for later this month. But as for what else he's doing, Double J is keeping hush-hush.